I want to talk a little bit to you about a story that's been huge in the news this uh, last couple weeks. Um, as you would expect in the final stretch of the campaign, an old favorite is being revived. Trump is literally Hitler. On Tuesday, John Kelly, who was uh, Trump's White House chief of staff, said the former president fits, quote, into the general definition of fascist and that he praised the loyalty of Hitler's Nazi generals. Uh, at the CNN town hall with Anderson Cooper that we referenced earlier, Harris said she too believes that Trump is a fascist. Take a look. Let me ask you tonight, do you think Donald Trump is a fascist? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And I, and I also believe that the people who know him best on this subject should be trusted. Um, all right. I just want to point out quickly before we go forward, at the same time in that interview, I noticed it this morning because I was watching it this morning, that Anderson Cooper said to Kamala Harris, do you believe Donald Trump is anti-Semitic? Um, Donald Trump, who, of course, has uh, a son-in-law who he entrusted with a lot of stuff in the Middle East, uh, is Jewish. His daughter converted to Judaism. And Harris said, I believe Donald Trump is a danger to the well-being and the security of America. She would not answer that question. It is very odd to believe someone to be a fascist, but not an anti-Semite, a very strange definition. But lots of our peers in the media are embracing this line. Steve Generational Wealth Schmidt of the Lincoln Project spoke to Mehdi Hassan, who has said some sort of slightly fascistic things in the past, which he's apologized for. Uh, the, they were talking the other day on a Substack Live uh, conversation, and this is a quote that stuck out to me utilizing rhetoric and hate that is no different than anything that came out of the mouth of a striker or a Goebbels about Haitians eating yeah. cats and dogs. This poisoning, is poisoning the blood of our country virulent. straight from Mein Kampf. All right. Look, there's a lot to say about this. I, I just want to quickly say two things. Um, the rhetoric of Donald Trump is inexcusable, and he's someone I won't be voting for, and I have... Um, contempt for. And unfortunately, because of the behavior of some people in the media, you end up sounding like you're defending him. But two things here is that, uh, first of all, the pronunciation of Goebbels <laughs> maybe should be revisited. To say that there is no difference between Stryker. Now, for those of you who don't know what he's talking about, the subtitle there said Stryker as if it was a position in soccer. Stryker is Julius Stryker, the former editor in chief of Der Stürmer which uh, was a publication published in, in, in Germany before the Nazi period in the 20s until uh, 1945. Julius Stryker was put on uh, trial at Nuremberg and executed. And if you have to look at something that I think is probably one of the most racist newspapers and most anti-Semitic things ever produced, it would be Der Stürmer. And uh, keeping in mind that they had a little tagline at the top of Der Stürmer, that said in German, die Juden sind unser Unglück, the Germans, the Jews are our misfortune on every copy that you got, and the cartoons there are rather hideous. To say that the rhetoric has no differentiation that, they, that Steve Schmidt can find between what Trump says, admittedly very bad stuff, and Julia Stryker is despicable. It is wrong and it is ahistorical and it does not do any justice to people who are actually victims of Nazi crimes. Here's the New Republic back in June. This is a cover from the New Republic um, that decided to take what was a 1932 campaign poster and uh, replace Hitler's head. It was a floating hard day's night like <laughs> Hitler poster, replaced the floating head with Donald Trump. And they explained this, by the way, by saying, that uh, anyone transported back to 1932 Germany could very, very easily have explained away Hitler's excesses and been persuaded that his critics were going overboard, etc. One thing that I think is really um, interesting is that to say that we're in a Weimar moment, that these are very similar now, and, and if you want to go Google and say Weimar Republic, America, Trump, etc., what people don't really understand about this is that there was a very political, very specific moment in Weimar, Germany. There was another poster that year that it reminded me of, and I dug it up and it said, over 300 National Socialists died for you at the hands of Marxist subhumans. You notice a difference there. 300 National Socialists, not totally wrong because there were street fights all over Germany at the time. 
We're talking about a place that was consumed with political violence. We have no such thing in America right now. Obviously, there's a big difference in the economy, et cetera, but people were murdering each other on the streets of, not, of, of Weimar Germany, and we have nothing similar today. To say that those th two things are similar is wrong. To say that there was a democracy, flowering democracy, that was destroyed in, in the 1930s by, by the election of Hitler is partially wrong, too. It got a lot worse, but the Weimar Republic in the late 1930s was itself something of a dictatorship being run by emergency decrees. So the point of this is very simple. I, I very, very much take exception to the idea that all the hideous rhetoric that we get from Donald Trump, and again, the clarification that this stuff is very, very bad and I don't like any of it, but if it's Hitlerian, what do we make of rhetoric that is actually deeply anti-Semitic, that is deeply racist, in and in a, you know, obvious case that that is the goal, which is an exterminationist ideology, which Adolf Hitler laid out in 1925 in his book, Mein Kampf. If that's fascism and this is fascism, are those the same things? I don't think so. We can attack Donald Trump. We can say Donald Trump is the worst thing that ever happened to American politics without saying that Donald Trump is Hitler. One final point on this I saw this morning. I just wanted to throw this in. I saw two people who were journalists saying that they expect if Donald Trump wins in a few weeks, that they will be put into camps. Charlemagne the God, who I have a lot of respect for, by the way, was on with Anderson Cooper. He said, why are you talking about Kamala Harris when you're not talking about Donald Trump's fascism and how he said he's going to put people in camps. What is that a reference to? Well, Donald Trump has said, and you know, polls unfortunately say a lot of people agree with this, that if you're gonna deport people, you have to house them somewhere. To say camps, to say Nazi, to say Hitler, to say fascism is redolent of what? It is redolent of the Holocaust, putting people in camps. Do we truly believe that? Do we truly believe that that is upon us? I don't want to see a Donald Trump presidency. I expect a lot of you don't either, but let's be serious. We're not going to end up in camps if Donald Trump wins. We're not going to have a Nazi dictatorship. Let's fight fair and call out Donald Trump for the things that he says and the things that he does and not go about destroying history and undercutting the seriousness of things that happened from 1933 to 1945 in all of those victims to say that we are like them. We are not. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today. Um, I want to thank Nellie Bowles, Olivia Rheingold, and Sean Patrick Cooper for joining me. And thanks everyone for joining in. We'll be back next week. Let's take a minute now to put in your calendars. Election night with us. I won't be being that serious during election night. It's just the thing that pissed me off. Uh, we'll be hosting a huge live event. We'll start at 7 p.m. on November, November 5th, and we are going all night, and we have a lineup that is amazing. I just saw it today, and I was surprised. It's like the traveling Wilburys. It's all the good people. So you don't have to watch that crappy, shitty cable news. And if you haven't already, go to thefp.com and subscribe so you don't miss anything. We'll remind you of the programming that night if you do subscribe. See you next time.